morning, everyone. And what a great day already. It's good, isn't it? And hearing testimonies, hearing prophetic words, the Lord is here with us and in us, and we celebrate today. Pentecost, wow, what a great time to celebrate the birth of the church, the empowering of the disciples, the empowering of us, the filling of us, the embodiment of Jesus in us and we in him. And it all that's what it's all about. And we've been talking today and expecting today, believing for great things for God to do that we can actually see happen. Hallelujah. And God really wants to do it. He always wants to do it. He loves us. He wants to heal. He wants to bring. He wants to empower us in a greater way. You know, you get the baptism of the Holy Spirit, but that's, that's, that's just the beginning. That's not the one-time deal and it's over. That's the beginning of a new life of power in Jesus Christ. And I'm thankful today, and uh, we're going to have a time of ministry, and you need to pray for me because I'm going to just do 15 minutes, and then we're going to have a half hour of ministry. And I want to really encourage you during the ministry time, uh, however it's led, Pastor Steve's leading that, however it is, don't only believe for yourself. When they're up, you know, you come up and you get prayed for, you get your miracle, you go sit down, there's others. Pray for them, believe for them, be involved in every person that comes up here for prayer. Be involved with it. And even the ones that are praying, pray for them, the ones that are praying, that'll do it. it and uh, we're just, it's just a very, it's going to be a very special time, I know, in the Lord. So be praying for that uh, and believe. So let's just pray. And I have a message, I believe, is for the Lord, from the Lord. And, uh, but let's just pray first. Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus for the blood of Jesus that cleanses us from all sin and covers and protects us from all, everything of the enemy. We thank you, Lord, for that. And Lord, I thank you for sending the Holy Spirit that he can live within us even today. And may we all be filled afresh today. May we all be empowered today. May many hear a specific calling even today, Lord, of what you've called them to do and to be. And so we commit this to you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. The message today is entitled, The Key to Power in Our Life and Ministry the key to the power. And uh, I want to read the kind of the, you know, in the Acts chapter 2 is where Pentecost comes and it's written about. But I want to read from chapter 1 and just kind of the lead up to that and what Jesus was doing. So in Acts chapter 1, verse 1, and some of these verses that I had today, in fact, quite a number of them have been read already or spoken about. But uh, we'll just see what the Lord is doing. Acts 1, verse 1, it says, In the first book, O Theophilus, I have dealt with all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day when he was taken up after he had given commands through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. And in reading that, I'm just going to make some comments. Uh, Theophilus, uh, the, the writer is Luke, and he's bringing this first book, which we know now as the, 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 the gospel of Luke, because that was it, and it was like a journal of what he had. Now he's writing a journal from, or a t teaching, or bringing forth something after Jesus rose from the dead, and what happened. And so he's there, but what I looked at is verse 2, it says, the day when he was taken up, that means he ascended into heaven, he had given commands, a command, the king of kings, lord of lords, giving a command. What's the command? Go into all the world and preach the gospel, and these signs will follow you. Miracles will happen. Hallelujah. I get excited when I start thinking about it. <laughs> 
They will. That was the command of the Lord. Not just a suggestion. This is the main thing. And so he went and his 12 he chose in verse 3, presented himself alive to, to them after his suffering by many proofs. I mean, proofs. They could touch him. They could feel him. Even the ones that didn't believe it said, here, touch my hand, see. And they could touch him, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. So he had teachings and lessons, and he was with them for 40 days. Now understand, Pentecost is 50. So after he left, they had 10 days. And what did he tell them to do? And while, verse 4, staying with them, he ordered them. Okay, here's an order now. You got a command what to do. Now you got an order them not to leave Jerusalem because the people would leave Jerusalem and then come back for the feast of Pentecost, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard from me, for John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now, which is approximately 10 more days. Hallelujah. And just think of Jesus saying that you will be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Just think of the faith that they started thinking. Jesus said this. Everything he said happens. This is going to happen. Just think what. They didn't know what was going to happen. I mean, that, that is astonishing. But they, they did that. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, verse 6, will you at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? Jesus kind of ignored the question. He said, it's not for you to know the times or the season that the Father is fixed in his own authority, but, here's what Jenny read, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and the Judea and then Samaria and then to every nation on earth. Wow, can you imagine He's given us power to do something and to be something. And when he had said these things, verse 9, as they were looking up, they were gazing into heaven as he went. I'm sorry. And when he had said these things, as they were looking on, he was lifted up and a cloud took him out of their sight. I mean, it's just one sentence here, but we're talking about an incredible event. Can you imagine all of a sudden he's teaching and giving the commands and everything? He says, okay. I'm leaving now, and all of a sudden he starts going up into the clouds. You know, we didn't we didn't have you know airplanes and all that kind of stuff, or you know, and he just went up there. And then two men appeared, verse ten. And while they were gazing into heaven as he went, behold, two men stood by them in white robes and said, "Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up into heaven?" Well, I can understand what. This Jesus who is taken up from you into heaven will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. And he's going to come back again, folks. But we've got our command and we've got our orders. The order is still the same today. The command is still the same. Wait until the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Receive the power. Be baptized in the Holy Spirit. And we'll go on with that. Verse 12. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the Mount of Olives. And which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. And when they had entered, they went up to the upper room where they were staying. And then he names all 11 disciples, 12 disciples minus one. And verse 14 is very crucial. That all these with one accord were devoting themselves to prayer together with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus and his brother, in those days, Peter stood up among the brothers. The company of person was about 120, and he said. And then the rest of the chapter is choosing another disciple to take Judas' place. But I was looking at this, and I thought the upper room. You know, I was thinking of just a little room where they're all huddled. There was 120 of them in there. It would have been at least the size of this room. And it would must, you know, be something, you know. And, you know, the wind came, and it would be like all these blinds just go, and the big sound and all that kind of stuff. So, but I, I saw that. But why 14 is important is because there's, 
three things here that they did that brought about revival or the move of God and so on. And I'll just name those very quickly. The first one, one accord, they were all in unity. If we're not in unity, the things are not going to happen that God has planned. And that's very important. And I'm not teaching on how to stay in unity, but that is the most important thing. Number two, the second thing is they devoted themselves to prayer, it says. And that's something we have to do. Not just a prayer meeting, but devoting yourself. Hey, I'm praying, I'm walking, and when I'm on the street, I'm, I'm talking with Jesus. That's prayer. That's what Jesus did all the time. And he said, oh, go over here, or yeah, do this, or speak this, or something. And they devoted themselves to prayer because they were in prayer meetings. That's not wrong to have prayer meetings. And it's, that's just where the power is. We have prayer meetings at church. But devoting yourself to that. And the, the third, there was a sense of anticipation, a sense of faith. And it's not, it's, it's, it's if we want the God to move in our community, in our church, and see miracles, we need to have unity. We need to have de devoting ourselves to prayer and together, and then we have to have this anticipation of faith that God has called us to do this, and we are going to see the miracles take place. Hallelujah. And souls saved. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. So that was the introduction. Now I'm going to go really fast. <laughs> As I was meditating and just preparing, the Lord showed me three things about Pentecost. And I, I won't go through all these scriptures that I have, but Pentecost was one of the major uh, Jewish feasts. Uh, it, was the, um, it was 50 days after Passover. It was called the Feast of First Fruits or the, the First Harvest. And in Jerusalem, people were gathering to come to this feast from every nation and every tongue sp spoken. And, and that was um, um, amazing. But the one verse I need to, to do, but instead, this is what the Lord showed me, instead of a, the first harvest, this is instead a, not a harvest of crops, but a harvest of souls. Hallelujah. That's what Pentecost is. A harvest of souls, and that's what we want to do on the day of Pentecost, Acts chapter 2. When the day of Pentecost, that's this feast, arrived, they were all together again in one place in unity. And suddenly, verse 2, there came from heaven a sound like rushing wind, filled the entire house where they were sitting, and divided tongues as we read it was like thunderbolts of fire appeared to them and rested on each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, all 120 of them, and began to speak in tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And then a big crowd, we heard, was formed, and they all came rushing over. And what is Because they heard them speaking in their language. They had these tongues. In Acts chapter 2, Peter preaches the, the message, and he says, Repent and be baptized, uh, every one of you, and for the forgiveness of sin, and you will, too, receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And so it's this harvest a harvest, Pentecost harvest of souls. They received a word and 3,000 came to the Lord. Hallelujah. Actually, it was 3,120. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And they devoted themselves to, to, to many things. You know, during the times, it said the teachings and breaking of bread and so on. And many wonders and signs were taking place. And then we had the message of, of, of ready today, which I had, had down here about how Peter went to the temple and he says, silver and gold I don't have in the name of Jesus. And then he preaches his second message. Hallelujah. And then it comes up to 5,000 souls. Wow. It's a festival of harvest. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And that's what God wants to do today. He has not stopped. He wants to do it today. A festival of harvest of souls. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I got to move on. The second thing the Lord showed me was that it's an empowering by the Holy Spirit. 
Pentecost was and is an empowering of the Holy Spirit for our lives personally and for our ministry. Acts 1, verse 8, we read they will receive power. Acts 2, verse 2, 4, they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in tongues. It's an incredible gift, tongues. It's wonderful. It's, it's, it's for the ministry, for number one, because it, 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 it showed them. I've had many experiences. I remember uh, praying for a, a, a Vietnamese uh, person. I couldn't speak their language, or I, I don't hardly remember it all, but the Lord said, just pray over him. He came up to, for prayer, for healing. I just prayed over him in tongues, and guess what happened? It was in Vietnamese. I mean, I just said, this is real. <laughs> you know? We've had in Poland a number of times praying for people to receive baptism in the Holy Spirit in tongues, and they start speaking in English and saying, praise God, God is so good. And I told the interpreter, I said, no, tell them not to speak English, their tongue. And he says, they don't know English. Praise God. I, I, I can give many examples, but I, I don't have the time. But that tongue also is for you personally. And I'll tell you what Paul even said. I pray in tongues more than you all because it says that the Holy Spirit speaks when you don't know what to pray or how to pray. And I can't imagine not having that kind of prayer life. To pray in tongues when you have problems and so on and situations, you just learn it and receive it today. Receive that gift today. It's for you to, to live in your whole life. And then Peter at the end, he says, the, for the promise of the Holy Spirit is for you and your children and everyone who is far off, which includes us. Is it possible today? Hallelujah. For certain, <laughs> you have to have a heart for people, the lost. And the signs are for the lost. You don't need the sign. It's for the lost. It's not necessarily what he's talking about in church. You don't evangelize in a church. You evangelize out there. And that's where you need to do, and I want to encourage you to be bold and to be strong and, and to hear his voice. Like Peter was walking down, and I, I, I read that, you know, that was normal to have blind and lame and so on people at the gate. How did he know to go to that one man? Because he walked with the Lord. And he says, hey, go to that one. Silver and gold I don't have. In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. He grabbed a hold of him, and it brought incredible things happened. And it can happen to us and needs to happen to us. Be bold, be strong, and only believe. Today, God wants to empower you today to receive tongues, to be re-energized, to be in power and for your own life, and for others, nothing's impossible with God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Finally, first one, it's a harvest of souls. Second one, it's an empowering in your life. And there's three keys to get this power. First one, I just want to do this verse, Luke 8, verse 48. And this is about Jesus. He was in a crowd and he was going to... Uh, he was going to go heal a uh, centurion's, I think, uh, daughter who was really sick. And while he was going, the crowd was so overwhelming. This lady climbs through, and she goes on there to touch him. And you got to touch Jesus. If you need healing today, you need to touch Jesus. And look at what he said to the gal in verse 48. He said to her daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. Wow. By faith. You believe Jesus can do it? Yes, okay. You go in faith. You come up here, we'll lay hands on it, but you could just receive it out there even. By faith. Hallelujah. When you lay your hands on the sick, that's what we'll be doing. Receive it. Hallelujah. 
you do it. But then he said, while, verse 14, while he was still speaking, somebody from the ruler's house, this is a different one, came and said, your daughter is dead. Man. Don't trouble Jesus any longer. But that's nothing for Jesus. He's conquered death. And he said his daughter is dead. So Jesus said, verse 50, Jesus on hearing this answer, he said, don't fear, only believe. And she will be well. Wow. And then he went. And he raised her from the dead. Nothing's impossible with faith. And that's what we need. Today, rising from the dead, healing of this, healing of that, nothing is impossible. Just take hold of it and be bold and receive from God. Nothing is impossible with faith. Thank you, Lord. The second one is Acts 1, verse 5, John baptized with water, but he'll baptize you in the Holy Spirit. You have to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. And if you have been baptized in the Holy Spirit, then you need to continually to be filled. Because, you see, baptism is more than a ceremony, as marriage is more than the wedding. I'll say that again. Baptism is more than a ceremony as marriage is more than the wedding. It's the start of a new relationship, the start of new living. It's the start of a new life with the empowerment of Jesus and you're walking in your life. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And it gets stronger and deeper, the filling and the great power I was reading David Hathaway just recently about Pentecost, and he got baptized in the Holy Spirit when he was 13 years old. He is 92 right now and still going for it, and in this letter, uh, article he's saying, I am going more for it now than when I was in my 20s. He says, the power is so strong and so real. I'm going for it. I'm not quitting. Hallelujah. And it's just amazing seeing him. Thank you, Lord. I desire for more. I really do. I want to see more. I want to see more. First thing, faith. Second thing, baptism of the Holy Spirit and walking in that new relationship with God. And the last one is his dwelling within us. Hallelujah. It says, I will ask, John 14, I will ask the Father who will give you another helper to be with you forever, even the spirit of truth, whom the world can't receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. That's the presence of God. The key to power in your life is knowing the presence of God and being able to talk and relate and be with him continually. My favorite verse for this year and the closing is Psalm 16, verse 11. You will show me and you have shown me the way of life, granting me the joy of your presence and the pleasures of living with you forever. That's the key to power is the recognizing and seeing the Holy Spirit within us. Heavenly Father, as we come now to a time of ministry. And we just contemplate all these things. We've heard your voice. And faith comes by hearing. And Father, may faith arise. And may we just know that we know. Empower us today afresh, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, this is what we're going to do now. Um, we're going to move the pulpit over in a minute and move some of the furniture over. I'd like um, Luther and Sandy to come up. I'd like Colin and Pam to come up and Tess to come up as well, if you'd like to come up now. And we're going to explain what we are going to be doing. So, Tess, if you can come up, uh, that's great. And uh, if you can just move that pulpit, that's wonderful.
So God is here and he's ready. The Holy Spirit is poised and ready to move. All you need to do, the three of us in Perth have got faith, no doubts at all, God's going to move in power. He's in charge. He told us he'd do this. He's going to do it. So we are just vessels. We're going to pray for you. What we were asking you to do is come up. It's a walk of faith for you to come up. And as you walk up and come up for prayer, believe what God's going to do. Now, this is what we're going to do in the prayer. We're first of all going to pray for you to be filled and empowered with the Holy Spirit. That's the first one. And we may not get past that. He may just fill you and that will do everything. But that is our first prayer. You are filled and empowered, filled with his power. And secondly, if you are still standing in that and you have a physical need, you don't even need to tell us. Just say healing and point to the area that you need healing. We don't need your story. God doesn't need to know. He already knows. So when you come up, we're praying for you to be filled and empowered with the Holy Spirit. And then the second part, if you need healing, just point to the part. You may be healed as the Holy Spirit fills you. He's quite in charge, knows exactly what he's doing. But put your hands up if you're believing for a healing today and a move of the Holy Spirit. Okay, so there's going to be a good number of prayers. Gwyn is going to put some music on now. And then as the music comes, as you come forward, believe for what God's going to do. So we're going to have a great time. Enjoy it. Be healed. Receive. Be empowered. And let's uh, go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 